You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Joining us right now uh, to share his thoughts and reflections on Congressman John Conyers is Wendell Anthony, Reverend Wendell Anthony who is the uh, leader of the NAACP in Detroit. Reverend Anthony, how you doing? Fine, Roland. How you doing, man? You know, um, 90 years old, 53 years served in Congress. The reality, though, is that he resigned with allegations of sexual harassment, and essentially all of that has been wiped away. Uh, normally, someone of his stature uh, will get far more accolades, lots more attention. Uh, but in a, in a sense, if it wasn't for black media, the death of John Conyers would barely be noticed. Well, Roland, there's an old African proverb that says, until the lion tells his own story, tells that the hunt will always glorify the hunter. That's why you are in black media. That's why you're Roland Mark. That's why you do what you do, because you know we cannot depend on other folks to tell our story. John Conyers is an icon in our community. You cannot wipe out 53 years of service to women, to labor, to faith base, to refugees, to everybody, to presidents, to mayors, senators, congresspeople, 53 years about certain allegations. And yes, everybody should be treated fairly. But I would dare say as a minister, I know that we all fall short of the glory of Christ. And one of the things that we do is to judge the totality of one's life experience. And when I look at the life experience of John Conyers, when I look at somebody who has stood in the gap for you and for me, when I look at somebody who's founded the Congressional Black Caucus with others, when I look at somebody who has stood up for Haitian refugees when folk in Florida were shooting at them when they were trying to come here for liberty and justice for all, when I look at John Conyers stood in the gap for a president, Bill Clinton, who saved him from impeachment. When I look at somebody who stood in the gap to preserve our nation from right-wing extremist federal judges who wanted to take us back 50 years and now look and see what we got. When I look at somebody who went to jail to preserve the freedom and the democracy of Nelson Mandela, who gave Rosa Parks a job when nobody else would who stood with Martin Luther King when everybody was afraid of him and ran away from him. When I look at that, I'm looking at the totality of John Conyers. I'm not looking at the small expose that someone wants to put in terms of allegations. He was for Me Too before the Me Too had a movement. He was for Black Lives and said Black Lives Matter before we had Black Lives Matter folk running around and talking about that. And no, I'm not excusing anything. But I'm saying, let's look at the totality of everything. You got a president, Roland. You got it. A president that's running around and talking about he likes to grab people by their personal parts. He's the president of the United States who's committed treacherous acts and traitorous acts against this nation, who is at the helm of our country. And yet somebody like John Conyers, who stood in the gap for all of us, cannot be honored and recognized for what he's done. Surely he can that's why we in Detroit and folk all over the world will never forget the impact of John Conyers. May he rest in peace. We thank God for the likes of him and what he's done for all of us. People who don't even know what John Conyers has done will be the beneficiaries of him. Elijah Cummings, God bless him and God rest his soul. He comes after John Conyers. John Conyers set the stage for men and women like Elijah Cummings, I'm sure Cummings would tell you that if he were alive today. And so I'm simply saying that it's up to you and me and us who believe in jobs, justice, and peace, which is what he fought for, to keep that memory alive. Surely we must, and we have a duty to remember not to forget. You talk about uh, how Detroit uh, re remembers him. Um, how is the city doing so? Uh, are, are you seeing uh, the kind of coverage on local television, on radio station, in newspapers, uh, befitting someone of his stature and more than a half century of service? 
it's coming better now, uh, Roland, but you know we have to check people and remind them, uh, even in the city of Detroit. But Detroit has recognized who John Conyers is. We're not, we're not thwarted or tainted, or we're not reduced by what has occurred at the national scene and by those who ran away at the last moment and did not support him when he needed them. He supported you when you needed him. And so we're simply saying, yes, we see it. There's going to be a great tribute paid to him at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, Saturday and Sunday, open to the public. And then Monday, there will be the homegoing service uh, at Greater Grace Temple Church. I'm told and I understand there'll be a number of people coming in, a number of entertainers and celebrities, a number of political people, a number of members from the Congressional Black Caucus, former President Bill Clinton is coming in uh, to pay tribute to John Conyers. So it will be a tribute befitting uh, the individual. But keep in mind, Roland, you know him just like I did. Yep. John was not um, uh, elaborate. He was not ostentatious. Uh, he was not like, you know, the Roland Martin type guy who run, went around to wear all these fancy stuff. John was just a regular everyday brother. Now, hold up, Even nine. Hold up, nine. Hold up, nine. John, John Conyers <laughs> was, was all... He, let's just be clear. He was always clean. He, 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 no, he, he dressed like he was no, from Detroit now. The pocket square. You, the gators. Now, come on now. now he might what not, I'm just saying. He, he, may, he may not have the Kente <laughs> cloth robe. <laughs> but I would see him in his red cap of Alpha Side uh, jacket with his yeah, cream well, pants and red shoes. Well, he was, he, was, he was a little more modest than some people. <laughs> I mean, he, he didn't go way out there. But, but you and I both know, John was a very humble guy. And see, the thing I, I loved about John is that John did not have to be out front. A lot of folk got to be out front. John was content in getting the job done. He had the spirit of his father. His father was not educated like he was. And John was from Conyers. They were, his family was from Conyers, Georgia. That name, Conyers, the name that they took. And his father was a labor leader. He fought at a time when it was dangerous for black people to be organized in the labor union. That's where John got his momentum. It was Rosa Parks and his kinship to her and to Martin Luther King that got King to connect with him because John was so involved in civil rights because of what his father was about. And so, John, it was a natural fit for John to be concerned about Nelson Mandela. And I can remember having many times... We used to have... Roland, we used to have breakfast at my church every Sunday morning. He would come to Fellowship Chapel where I pastor. We would have breakfast in between services. And we would talk about everything that you could think of, the president's... The governors, the senators, the county. There was some. I only wish that I had had the the opportunity to video those conversations mm. because they were deep conversations about everything you could think of. And John was not shy. He was very clear when we came here and had breakfast on Sunday mornings. And so when I think about John, I think of somebody who loved people from the streets to the suites. He never made a distinguishing a line between people. That's why when he went out in the street in 1967 with a bullhorn, when Detroit was having its rebellion, people respected him because they knew he was for the people. He was not ostentatious. He was not uh, flying by night. He was not here today and gone tomorrow. He was the same day after day after day. He stood up when others stood back. That's why he stood up for reparations. He stood up and brought H.R. 40 to the floor time and time again. And as you know, H.R. 40 does not do anything other than say we should have a study right. commission to study the issue. Not that we're going to start tearing off people every day, even though we need to be towed off. I mean, if those people don't understand, that means to be distributed some remuneration for our enslavement <laughs> in America. But what I'm simply saying is that he stood up for that. And I'm glad to see now Sheila Jackson Lee. Mm -hmm. It's taking up that banner. So we look forward to John taking his rest. And I'm so glad that he went peacefully. He went in his sleep. And I'm told that he had breakfast that Sunday morning. He said to his son that I don't feel um, very like much like getting up and moving. I just think I'll go back and have a little nap. 
and he went back to bed, uh, rolling. He went to sleep, and he did not wake up. And so God called him to rest. John Conyers gave us his best. The question for us is what are we willing to give everybody else? Reverend Wendell Anthony, President of Detroit NAACP Chapter. I certainly appreciate it. Thanks for your thoughts and reflections on the late Congressman John Conyers. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you. I want to go to my panel now, Monique Presley, legal analyst and crisis manager. Also, Mustafa Santiago Ali, former senior advisor for environmental justice at the Environmental Protection Agency, and also Erica, Erica Savage-Wilson, host Savage Politics Podcast. So it was very interesting last night. So there were some people on social media who were not too particularly happy with me, Erica, because I dared ask the question, was Obama going to issue a statement? <laughs> And it clearly is black people st still can't say nothing about Obama. It's like Jesus, MLK, and Obama. Now, I think now it's Jesus and Obama, even before MLK. Wow. And first of all, what people don't understand is that's what we do. Right. As journalists, we, we make those calls. When John H. Johnson died, uh, we were pulling statements from different people and former presidents and Colin Powell and other people, and then we call Oprah. We asked the question, like, okay, they're going to release a statement. Media mogul in Chicago. Media Titan dies. Uh, and uh, folks, you know, I wrote a column on, ticked off Oprah. And she called. Uh, and uh, we had, had that issue. But again, that's what we do. Uh, and I think it says something about Bill Clinton. He's going to be there Monday. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's going to speak at John Conyers' funeral mm -hmm. on Monday. Yeah. When a lot of people have gone radio silent yep. because yep. of how John Conyers resigned and why he resigned yep. from Congress in 2018. And so I'm glad you brought that up because people have to also remember that this is the same man that co-sponsored the Voting Right Act back in 1965. So what Reverend Anthony um, talked about is looking at the body of the whole person, looking at the portfolio, and that we are beneficiaries of his um, courage, his acts of... Uh, courage in um, his 26 elections um, in the House of Representatives, we have to recognize that. We also have to recognize is that he had a presence in the impeachment hearings of a President Nixon. So you saying that uh, as a journalist, but also um, talking about a politician recognizing the death of an elder statesman, that is the absolute right thing to do. Um, and so I definitely would be looking for um, some type of statement from um, the former president. And look, Mustafa, the bylaws line, is here. If you don't have the voting rights after 65, there is no mm -hmm. right. Obama. There, there is no 55 members of the Congressional Black Caucus. See? There is no... I mean, I mean, we, we could go on and on and on. Um, and I believe that you do look at somebody, you do not ignore um, why he resigned. You, did not, you do not ignore those women who said that he uh, sexually harassed them. You don't ignore that, mm -hmm. but you also cannot deny uh, his legacy and what he, in what he accomplished in 53 years serving uh, the citizens of Detroit. Yeah. Most folks don't know that I worked for Chairman Conyers for two years. I traveled with him around the country. He was my mentor. He was my friend. Um, and, and it's always interesting because when you work for somebody and you get to really know them, then you also get to answer the phone for them. You get to see who comes into the office and asking for a favor, uh, who's calling and say, well, should I do this? Should I go this direction? And for people not to show up now, I think it says something about their character. Um, so we can honor, um, you know, anybody who felt like they were impacted. And as you said, we should do that. But Chairman Conyers was, was an incredible, incredible man. When we talk about health care now, when I was there, we worked on H.R. 676, was the universal health care bill. I can't tell you how many people across the country used to call and thank the congressman for raising their health care stories, you know, horror stories that were going on. All these other things that he focused on. I would walk with him through the airport, and he would literally, even if we were late for a plane, he would stop. And he would talk to the, you know, to the, to the bellmen or the folks who are working there just as long as he would talk to somebody who is someone who everybody knew. And he used to tell me, he would say, Mustafa, never forget where you come from. Make sure that you are always honoring those people who have rolled with you and mm -hmm. you should roll with them. And that's just the type of person that he was. Monique, you served as an attorney for Bill Cosby. 
And I remember when the documentary was coming out of the black stuntmen. And they delayed it to remove Bill Cosby from it. And I said, I blasted them for that. And the reason I did so is because there is no black stuntmen association without what Bill Cosby did. And what I said is, Bill Cosby is sitting in prison right now. And when Bill Cosby goes on to glory, that will be a part of his story. But also the Cosby Show being number one will be a part of the story. Also the black stunt and being a part of the story. I spy a part of the story. You cannot get rid of any of that, even with a criticism over here. And I think, it, to, to Mustafa's point, it's been very telling how silent a lot of people have been since his passing who greatly benefited from him in his leadership. Yes, and in part, there's a lack of gratitude um, because just in general, when our generals get older and move on and are not anymore the lion of the house or the senate, the stories don't pass uh, and people forget exactly how they got wherever it is they got and mm. whose shoulders they had to stand on to do it. Mm. But they're also rolling is this thing, and I was looking at a post from um, Kadeem Hardison's mom mm. uh, a couple of, maybe like a week ago. And I mean, and Bethany Hardison, she pulls no punches about anything. Right. Right. But, and, sh and she had to, as she was reflecting on the death of Diane Carroll and that scene that everybody kept playing over and over again from a different world and how iconic that one episode was. And she said, but none of this would have happened. But for this one and this one and this one, and yes, I will say this name too. And it's a shame to me that we almost have to apologize for giving honor where honor is due. Yes. We have to preface it. We have to make sure people know that we haven't forgotten whatever bad last act a person had. Um, and the shame of it to me with Congressman Conyers is that he resigned. Again, mm. we're seeing it happen with Franken. We're going to see it happen with others. Yeah, but we're seeing Franken, though, He's been given a show on Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. He's been, he is being brought back into the fold. Right. Well, and in fact, I don't be shocked if he runs for U.S. Senate. Well, and he should, is, is right. the thing. What you do when somebody pushes you out and takes away your due process is you fight. Mm -hmm. The shame of it was for Congressman Conyers for it ha to happen so late in life yeah. and in mm -hmm. career that instead of causing the fight, he bowed out, but it left things unsaid, um, and he was not given the benefit that he should have of process. And to me, that is that is always a shame in terms of someone's legacy. Well, folks, the uh, funeral for Congressman Conyers, again, will be on Monday, 11 a.m. Uh, in Detroit. Uh, the viewing takes place on Saturday and Sunday, and uh, we are getting information, trying to find out uh, if uh, a live stream is going to be available for that funeral, so we can also live stream it on the Roland Martin Unfiltered platform. All right, folks, back to that Roland Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, y'all, it's the holiday season. This is when you think about spending time with family and friends. This is also when you count your blessings and support those less fortunate. This year, be a holiday hero and change someone's life forever. Right now, hundreds of thousands of Americans are sitting in jail without being convicted of a crime. Why? Because they lack the financial resources to pay their bail. Now think about it. If you are arrested for any minor offense, you will be taken directly to jail. And if you don't have bail money, you will stay there until a court date is scheduled. That could be days, weeks, or even months. Simply put, America's bail system is broken for people of color. Freedom folks should be free. That's why the Ebony Foundation has partnered with the Bail Project and is sponsoring the Home by the Holiday campaign. The Bail Project has helped bail out thousands of people over the years, and with your help, they plan to bail out a thousand people by New Year's Day. Now, how's that for a holiday gift? A donation from you today can change someone's life tomorrow. Let you know people of color represent upwards of 90% of the jail population across the country. Now, without bail, nearly 90% of those charged with misdemeanors plead guilty. However, with paid bail, less than 2% receive the jail sentence. Sometimes justice needs just us to join the fight. 
and be a holiday hero and donate 25, 50 or more to help the Ebony Foundation bring our brothers and sisters home by the holiday. To donate, go to homebytheholiday.com. That's homebytheholiday.com. And we want you to do it now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.